never thought that I would be in this position. Sometimes you inherit unsolicited circumstances that can completely overtake your life. I may never be able to understand why it happened to me, but I am able to choose how I respond. Life has a way of teaching us lessons. Lessons that we never asked for. Lessons that we never thought that we would need. Lessons that change us forever. Some people in your life may only be around for a season, but those people, they are the ones that can impact how you live the rest of your life. When Kendall was young, we saw that she had the drive in her. She wouldn't give up. She would keep competing and keep competing, keep doing what she did until she got it right. She wasn't going to yeah, go she, off. Yeah. She didn't want to lose. If you came in second, you lose. She got her good looks from her mom, but she definitely has a lot of her dad's traits in her grit and determination. That came from her daddy. Yeah. You know? He yeah. was always very competitive. He was always going Kendall to be number one, number one, number one. She's never really been afraid to be in front of a crowd or perform or she had the work ethic of I mean, not many kids have it at all. And she had it from the time she was three all the way up. Obviously now she's still pushing herself. Cleaver, Texas. Being raised with my family, they I was the only child, so I was one of them. They always treated me like I was a young adult. They never treated me like a baby. And so I was a lot I matured a lot faster than people my age. My friends were always older than me because of select sports. I was always in the bracket above my age, so I always was with older people and my parents I would ask them questions whenever I was young because I would hear them talk about taxes and business stuff whenever I was in elementary school, like eight years old. I had the pleasure of teaching Kendall in third grade at Coleman Elementary here in Cleburne and she was a wonderful student who had goals set even as a, a young child. She was always inquisitive so she always asked questions and we answered her like an adult so she knew from an early age about hard work. I always say that I have my dad's insides and my mom's outsides because I look exactly like my mom, but I think work and have mannerisms just like my dad's. My dad was definitely an entrepreneur and whenever him and my mom got together, they worked as a team to build the businesses from the ground up. He built car washes, he had many storage buildings, we um, started gas stations, sold those, did everything like that. We had apartment buildings, we had um, duplexes, we rented out different houses, so, and I say we because I was a part of everything that my parents did. And so we had decided to do a trip and take Kendall when she was about eight. When we eventually told her, hey, we're going to Africa, she was, uh, she was beyond excited. She went and told, you know, her teacher at school, because she had to miss school, <laughs> like, the last week or so, and, um, Everybody was real excited for her because going over there is in a learning experience itself. Kim and Cody came in the room after school one day and they wanted to uh, know if it would be all right educationally for her to miss the last part of school. And I think it was like three weeks maybe um, that she would have missed and uh, I was just like trying not to laugh. <laughs> yes, it would be perfect for her to go, what an educational thing. Um, most kids would never do in a lifetime. So whenever I was eight years old, my parents were saying, we're going to Africa. And I'm like thinking of all these different things in my head. Her mother and I were both real nervous. Well, and her dad was too. Yeah. And uh, we were her not papa. happy with it. Yeah, we were not happy with it. I mean, we were happy for her, but we were really concerned about what was going on over there. I still have her passports and pictures of her and her mother. They're still in my safe because that's how worried I was. Okay, we're going to Africa. What is it going 
going to be like over there. I thought we were going to be landing in the safari, like a dirt roads, Kalahari, like we're getting off the plane and we're in some dirt. And that was not the case. We landed in Johannesburg, so like obviously that's a city and then we had to drive for hours and anytime an African says, oh yeah, it's just down the road, it's probably five hours away. <laughs> she loved it, you yeah. know, she, that's where she was like, like her daddy, you know, she loved it, she loved everything about it. She was so interested in the whole process and it was really, it was really neat and it, I was excited seeing her fall in love with it because I knew that that would make Cody really happy. <laughs> So, and she did, she fell in love with it. They explained to me what it was, what hunting was, what conservation was, and it just intrigued me. So, whenever I got over there, I fell in love with it, and my dad, he didn't bring a gun, like I said, and so I wanted to hunt so bad. And he was like, Kendall, I'm sorry, I didn't bring your gun. You said you didn't want to. I will bring you back whenever you're older, and we can start your safari then. This time around, we went to the gun range, <laughs> or we came out to the ranch, or we actually, uh, prepared and uh, she practiced shooting and you know she just had a knack for it. My dad always wanted the biggest and best for me so he actually started my hunting experience with the big five and everyone's like how did you shoot a gun whenever like that big of a caliber whenever you were 13 years old well first gun I ever shot was a 416. <laughs> When her dad was teaching her how to shoot, you know, uh, rifles that I would even want to shoot today because of the uh, kicking power that they have. But it did not, it didn't bother Kendall. Yep. She started yeah. young and she hadn't stopped. He didn't let me know that the kick of a gun was, I just thought that that's what it was because he started me out with a 416. So I shot that, went over there, and I started my journey there, and from there it's just taken off. <laughs> It was fun to follow her, you know, as she progressed in, you know, school um, and just see what all was going on in her life and the hunting was always just a big, big part. I was very proud of it, you know, yeah. I was bragged about it until people were probably sick of me talking about it. <laughs> You know, of work. I mean, it wasn't a piece of cake. It was hard work, getting up early, staying out, you know, coming coming back and going back out. And but, I mean, she loved it. She loved it just the same. I had pictures. Everybody yeah. wanted pictures. My sister. Every week she'd call me, well, what did Kendall do this week? I want to see her pictures. And I would send her pictures and she would show to all the guys in the office. And, oh my God, she killed that? How old is she now? And they were just impressed. Every week they wanted to know what Kendall was doing next. You know, when's she going back to Africa? What does she kill now? You know, so they were always, always wanting to know what was going on with Kendall. So, yeah, it was, she was a celebrity before she was even 15. <laughs> Well, Kendall, we've, uh, we've moved locations. We're in the in the Kalari now, proper Kalari, and we in, and more specifically, we in the in the northwest region of South Africa. Probably only about 20 miles as a crow flies from the Botswana border. So we're right up in here, and this is beautiful red sands and camel thorns and and, and uh, shepherd trees, matopi trees all over the place. And this is really one of my favorite places to hunt. And and we've come here for the sole purpose, uh, well, a little bit of planes game, but then also lion is our main focus yeah. while we're here. And you know, I think it's before any any big dangerous game hunt like we did with all the other ones, I would like to just you know go through a couple of pictures and through a couple of ideas of, of shot placement, especially seeing that you're using your bow. Um, you know, with a rifle hunting, it's a little bit easier because you've got a bigger margin for error. But with your bow, you really have to be pinpoint and, yeah. and shoot it exactly. So we went over there, we were just doing our thing. I was in Zimbabwe at the time and I had shot my leopard. And that's the first animal I really posted. I had a fan page at the time, it wasn't too many, like 10,000 followers probably. Um, just, I had accumulated that over a few months of just preparing to go on this trip. So I posted my leopard on Facebook and of course that generated some heat, but what really set people off was the lion. Well, let's move on now. I want to talk about 19-year-old Kendall Jones. This is drawing some outrage. She's a cheerleader from Cleburne, Texas. The storm that happened after I was posting all of these um, pictures, a lot of anti-hunters got a hold of it and people that didn't like hunting. I found out 
about it just like probably everybody else. I saw it online. I mean, these people were, you know, wanting to kill her and don't let her back to the U.S. And then the people, you know, Africa didn't want her in Africa. And you're hearing all these ugly, hateful things. This was my first shot at activism, I would say. So I just started this petition. It's an internet campaign. It's a petition. Basically, what it entails is just for now denying Kendall Jones, this lady who's promoting herself as a huntress, to um, deny her access to African states. I don't think they knew the extent of it at the time and what all was going on because it was already on the news. I was getting a ton of hate and I didn't even know it. And then I get on, my mom's texting me, are you okay? I'm like, what are you talking about? And she kind of explained it to me and then I got on and I was like, wow, like, I am getting a lot of notoriety from this. Cody was over there with, with uh, you know, several other people and everybody's advice was just let it lay low. Don't answer anything, don't talk to anybody. So remember that story we did on Kendall Jones, the 19-year-old cheerleader that was posting horrific photographs of her on her Facebook page? Well, Facebook decided to take her photographs down. They had Facebook hate pages saying like, kill Kendall Jones, hate Kendall Jones, plan to kill Kendall Jones, and my Facebook is the one that got taken down. The hatred that was out there, I couldn't believe people actually would Condemn somebody and talk somebody like that. I mean, they were wanting her dad, like you that. know. Yeah. They were wanting her to kill her, and, and it just—it was just awful. I've been told to kill myself. I hope your whole family dies. Like I'm going to come murder you. Like I hope all of your kids get cancer. Oh, it was awful. We went through a, a hard time. I felt sorry for Kendall and her mom and her dad just because. I mean, how do you how do you handle something like that? A 19 year old. A lot of her social media hate and threats were the normal, I hate you, I hope you die, I hope a leopard eats you, I hope a tiger, you know, most of it was like that, but then you had a public official put a tweet out. Asking for nude photos, and that wasn't just because he wanted them, he wanted to ruin someone's life. Yeah, you might not agree with me, but to blatantly try to ruin someone's life is sick to me. Every major news network had picked it up and I was called the baby face killer on the, I think it was the Germany newspaper. I was the face of a newspaper in um, Norway. Once she was home, it was announced that she was a cheerleader at Texas Tech. People were calling the university, wanting her to get kicked out. I got an email one time and they said, hi Kendall, my name is so and so. I am from wherever he was from. He said, but I am coming to Texas and I will find you and I am going to rape you, torture you, and rip your limbs off one by one and cause you the most painful death. She's got a lot more guts than I do because she just let it roll off yeah. and she just went on and did what she wanted to do. That went on for, you know, several months. My following grew from 15,000 to 50,000 to over 150,000 in 24 hours. For months after that, it just kept growing and growing and growing. Being at Tech at the time, I truly could not have picked a better school to go to. The president of the university called me. He was like, Kendall, we have this, so this is going on, blah, blah, blah. I just want you to hear it from me that you're safe here. We will provide extra security for you at the football games if you need someone to walk you home from class. Like, we will do what it takes because we support you. Once she got to Texas Tech, it, she had to do game day cheer, and so that was new for all of us. You know, we went to all the games, we had, you know, season tickets, and watched her on the sidelines, and it was really exciting. My four years at Texas Tech was absolutely amazing. I met a lot of good friends, have a lot of memories there, but there was some hard times at Tech too, especially with my home life. Cody's dad got sick first, and he had some issues, and he was in rehab, and uh, she was very close to Tom Tom. My Tom Tom, which was my dad's dad, he passed away my freshman year of college during finals. He was really, really involved with Kendall, and of course Mimi, you know, what what can I say about Mimi? She was just, she was a Mimi. She loved Kendall. She let Kendall, she Kendall would eat ice cream for breakfast, you know, they colored and she loved to hear all of Mimi's stories about when she was growing up and things that happened to her. My junior year, fall semester, 
my m dad's mom, my Mimi, she passed away from cancer. Kendall took it very, very hard, but you know, what do you do when you lose your grandparents and they're your world? Um, and then my junior year, first day of school, spring semester, my dad passed away. I had had surgery in December, and so I was on medical leave. And so during this time in January, I was able to actually go to her stuff. Me and my mom were at SHOT Show and my dad was gonna meet us out there, but he got sick and he decided he was just gonna stay back. We flew back Friday from, from the SHOT Show and uh, we drove home and then she immediately packed her bags and went to, drove back to Lubbock. He was in Fort Worth on a Friday night and they were trying to talk me into spending the night in Fort Worth. He says, no, I got up. I think he said that he had to go to Midland Odessa the next day that he was going home. I'd unpacked and caught up on my mail and talked to Cody for about an hour. My foot was swollen, so I just took my pain medicine and decided I was just gonna sleep. I turned my ringer off on my phone. Woke up the next morning about nine o'clock and had about 50 missed calls and text messages and um, from everybody but him. So I just knew. Well, Kendall what? called us first, wanted to know what was going on. And she goes, well, everybody's texting me all this stuff. I said, well, I said, I don't know. And she goes, well, I can't get a hold of my mom. And I said, well, is she at home? I tried to call my mom. My mom didn't answer. My dad didn't answer. No one was answering me. My grandparents answered and they were like, what do you mean? I'm like, yeah, everything's fine. I'm like, okay. So then I called my aunt and she's the one that found out. I was the first one to be told and I, my world fell apart. I finally got a hold of Kendall and uh, she was just screaming. She just been saying, Dad's dead. I can still hear her voice all the time. Kendall and her dad, they had this bond. I mean, they were like, well, they, you know, were, they were very competitive. <laughs> they were very one competitive, another, and they're, uh, they're exactly like each other. He gave me my ambition, my entrepreneurship. He was my hunting buddy. So, he was my dad. <laughs> I was his only little girl, and only child. Everything that a, a kid goes through, or growing up, or anything, you know, their parents normally have have felt. You know, I know what it was like to, you know, my first love or my first heartbreak, or, you know, not, you know, being able to do something, or you know, I've kind of been through all that, but I've never been through losing my dad. So, I really didn't know how she felt. That was hard because you can't take that pain away. To have people say you deserve to have your dad die is pretty intense, especially with the way he did. He was in a car accident. She would ask me, you know, you think dad would be disappointed because she didn't go through with her plan. No, I don't think he would be disappointed. She's 24 now. She's 24 years old and she's probably lived a lifetime of several of other people, yeah. 70 year old man. I am a true believer that everything happens for a reason, so I know there is a reason for it. I don't know why. We're very proud of her, everything that she's ever done. We've been proud. Me and my mom both, she has been an absolute saint. It wasn't in my plans to take over the ranch and take over this big house and everything that he worked his whole life for. I wasn't ready to take over at 21 years old, so. Now I'm 24 <laughs> and still not ready for it, but me and my mom are moving slowly, but surely we have a lot of help. She has all kinds of ideas for the ranch that she wants to do out here. And I think it's really refreshing to have her kind of pick up where he left off. So this is what I have been dealt. I never realized that I would face criticism or the death threats that were sent to my house day after day. I could have never predicted that I would lose my dad, my mentor, my best friend in life when I was only 21 years old. 
The lessons that I have been through have prepared me for what is to come. I may not be able to tell you exactly how the future is going to turn out, but I can tell you that I am more than equipped to face what is ahead of me.